Good morning, Walter. Please comment on the ministry of Ralph D. Winter and the United States Center for World Missions in Pasadena. Dr. Winter has a very good reputation and a very good ministry, and the Lord has blessed it, and I couldn't be more supportive of anything which is attempting to bring together Christian missions and to uh, unify the missionary outreach of the Christian church. So uh, Dr. Winter enjoys that reputation and uh, is a, a real man of God. Also, please comment on the Christian Legal Society. That's a good organization. And whether Simon Greenleaf is affiliated with this society in any capacity. I believe Simon Greenleaf is affiliated with it because Dr. Montgomery is affiliated with it, and he's the dean of Simon Greenleaf, so if no other way, we would be affiliated uh, with them. But uh, the Christian Legal Society has a good reputation, and uh, I'd like to see more Christian lawyers in it. I'd like to see more Christian lawyers, period. We need all the help we can get in the legal business. That takes care of last week's, now for this week. Dear Dr. Martin, can God speak to you through a particular scripture verse that seems to answer a question, or must the entire context be considered? He can speak to you any way that he chooses. He can take a single passage. He can take a passage in context or out of context. It just depends on what he intends to use for you. God has spoken to me in passages which were not addressed specifically to me, but they did have spiritual meaning at that particular moment for me as a child of God. So uh, I know that it ministered to my needs, and I'm sure lots of Christians have had exactly the same experience. But don't go through the Bible and list all the promises in the Bible and say all the promises in the Bible belong to me because they don't. There's a good book out a few years ago by Herbert Lockyer called All the Promises of the Bible which he listed all of the promises and he very carefully pointed out to whom the promises were made and in what context and how and what the limitations were. That's very valuable. Uh, if you can get it, it's, I think it's still in print. It's called All the Promises of the Bible, Herbert Lockyer. It's published, I believe, by Zondervan. Lockyer's name is L-O-C-K-Y-E-R. He's the kind of uh, ministry I want to have at the end of my life. I last saw him in San Diego at the age of 95. And he was standing straight as an arrow. He didn't need a cane to walk. He wore eyeglasses and a hearing aid, and apart from that, uh, you would never know that he was 95. He looked about 65, and he was still preaching the gospel and still teaching. I think he lived to be 100 years old, and then he went home to be with the Lord. He was useful right up until the end, and that's what you want to do. You want to pray to be useful up until the end. If you can't be useful, then pray to be taken out of the way so you will not get in the way of people who are useful, you see, because an awful lot of... Uh, uh, people grow older in the ministry and uh, they become boring, repetitious, and people just tolerate them because they're dear old saints. Uh, actually, old pastors never die, they just go out to pastor. <coughs> <laughs> Do the Jews consider Jesus to be a great prophet of theirs? Or are they hostile to Jesus not only as God but as anyone they would listen to? Depends on which ones you talk to. Uh, I've talked to a lot of uh, rabbis who have a very high view of Christ as a prophet. And I've uh, heard some who, if you mention his name, they'll spit and curse because they say he's a false messiah. That's the Hasidic Jews, the ultra-Orthodox. Um, some consider him a prophet. Some consider him to be a false prophet. By and large, the overall view of the Jew concerning Jesus worldwide is that he was a great, uh, a great Jew a great religious or prophetic teacher, but certainly not the Son of God. They would not accept him as the Son of God. My parents are Christians, and I love them, but they are making very bad financial decisions, and on top of that, they owe us money. Mom said, <laughs> so I can see where you would have a problem right away. <laughs> Mom says she prays, and the Lord confirms her decisions, but I don't see much evidence of consulting Scripture. It's hard for me to disagree with them because we usually argue. But I hate to see what these decisions will do to my sisters and brothers at home. No clothes, no beans for a week, etc. Would it be right for me to say anything? Yeah. I think it's very right for you as a Christian to say to your parents, look, I think we should pray about this because, you know, it's possible that you're making some serious mistakes. Everybody can make mistakes. Now, parents do not generally take advice from children. 
if for no other reason that they hate to admit that the kid's right. And we've all been through that at one time or another. So what you might do is you might consult someone whom your parents respect and then share with them your feelings and maybe that person can act as a buffer and say something to the parent that you couldn't get away with. Perhaps a pastor, perhaps a close friend. That's a good way to approach it if you can't approach mom and dad on your own because sometimes you're just a red flag in front of the raging bull simply because you happen to be the uh, offspring. So it's very difficult for children, even when they're dead right, to correct the parents, particularly when they're dead wrong. Very hard for a parent to say that the child is right. Although many times children, as they grow older, show a lot more uh, maturity and uh, acuity of judgment than the parents do. But it's very difficult to try and get an older person, particularly if they're suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Not Alzheimer's, but Alzheimer's disease. See? <laughs> Alzheimer's disease is to have your uh, desires and your feelings set in concrete so that uh, no matter what they say, you never change your mind. There are people like that, and I know nobody in my class is that way that they would ever be that way but uh, but there are people who just you know don't really think ever about anything they just rearrange their prejudices <laughs> good morning after reviewing your three tape series on the catholic church i was wondering what was the response of the jesuit priest mitchell paqua whom you debated on the john ankerberg show i don't know he hasn't written me uh, i gave him a set of the tapes and i asked him to give me some constructive criticisms and I haven't heard from him yet. Also, if any other Catholic priests, scholars, theologians have commented on the tapes. No, they haven't. I doubt very much whether they could say too much about them because all of the material on the tapes is quoted from Catholic texts, Catholic theology books, not from Protestant sources. I'm very careful when I deal with other people's views to quote almost exclusively what the people themselves say. So when I'm quoting what the Pope says on a subject, when I'm quoting what uh, Catholic Church's dogma is on a subject, comes right out of their own books, chapter and verse. So how in the world are you going to disagree with that? You can just say, well, I don't accept that, or I, that, you don't in understand that, or you misinterpret that. But uh, Pacwa and I got along fine. In fact, if Pacwa came to this class and preached on a Sunday morning sermon, he's a charismatic Catholic, you'd be blessed out of your socks because he loves the Lord, he preaches the gospel, he witnesses. I wonder how long he can stay in the Catholic Church acting the way he is because he makes no mistake about his convictions uh, and his uh, love of Christ. But he is bound to the Catholic system of theology. And I told him that. I said, regardless of your great intellect and your abilities and your education, whatever it may be, you're still bound by authority. He said, yes, I'm bound by authority to the church. I said, right, I'm not. I'm bound by authority to the scripture and to the spirit. And I said, and you are bound by a higher authority than the church because the Holy Spirit is above the church. Now, he doesn't have any response to that because the Holy Spirit is above the church. But he's a very fine Christian, but I don't think he's going to have any uh, real points to make in that area. Now, I'm, de I'm to debate him again for three more shows on John Ankerberg because we got such a tremendous audience response. Uh, to it. They want to do three more debates. So I'm going to do three more, one of which will be on a justification by faith, which was the core of the Reformation, and um, where we have a basic, dis basic disagreements with the Catholic Church. There are differences which persist.